Hi, I'm Ed from Rigid. Today we're going to talk about the 1224 threading machine. The 1224 threading machine has a capacity of quarter to four inch pipe, quarter to two inch bolt, and it has a two speed gearbox, 36 and 12 RPM. 36 RPM is designed for threading quarter to two inch pipe. 12 RPM is designed for threading two and a half to four inch pipe. The standard equipment that comes with the 1224 is the self-opening 714 die head, which has a capacity of two and a half to four inch. You get the 711 die head, which is self-opening and has a capacity of quarter to two inch. You also get a, si a set, I'm sorry, of half three quarter dies, universal MPT. You get a set of one to two inch dies, universal MPT. And you also get a set of two and a half to four inch receding dies, which are high speed. You also get a gallon of nuclear oil, you get a combination wrench, and you get three hex keys. And the sizes for those are 3 16 7 30 seconds, and quarter inch. You also get a spare cutter wheel, a toolbox, and on the machine is a 744 reamer and a 764 pipe cutter. We're going to show you how to install the dies on the 711 die head. The first thing that you must do. is release this trigger here. What this does is it opens the die head automatically when it reaches its proper depth for threading. This lever is going to throw out rather quickly. That's spring loaded. The next thing that you must do is loosen the locking lever and back this out enough to where you can push the locking screw out and there you'll see a roll pin. This will give you the ability to take the cam plate past its limit so that you can install the dies. Each one of these dies has a number on it and an insert to here line and a tab at the bottom. Okay. Each pocket on the die head also has a number as well. So you install the die to the line with the notch facing down in its corresponding pocket. It's also very important that your dies are clean. Now I've already cleaned these. I see a couple things here so I'm just going to wipe those clean. And We'll install those to the line in its corresponding pocket. Once you have them all to the line there, lift up your die head and slide your cam plate over. And that will push once you lay this flat again, or you can put your finger underneath it either way. That will push the locking screw up into place and hide that pin again. Okay, now we need to set it for size. What we'll do is on the locking screw there is a mark and you can correspond that with, I should turn this around so you guys could see it, it'll correspond with the sizes of pipe here according to what dies you have in there. Now we've installed a set of one to two inch dies so I'm going to set this at two inch. I will loosen my locking lever and slide the cam plate over until the mark on the locking screw corresponds with the mark on the cam plate. And once you have that there, then you can tighten down the locking screw. There you have it. So now we're going to do a thread with the 711 die head on the 1224. First and foremost, make sure your machine is in the off position and unplugged if necessary. Put on our glasses. And we're going to go ahead and install the pipe. And what I'm going to do is hold the pipe up and chuck up the front chuck. And if the pipe extends out the back, which in this case it doesn't, then you would use the centering device. Okay? So we'll hit that like that. Make sure it's hammered tight. And now we're going to go ahead and plug our machine in. Bring our switch out, our foot switch, and we're going to put the machine in forward. Okay. Now, as we've talked before, up to two inch you can thread, ream, and cut at high speed. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the foot switch and switch that over to high speed. I'll bring my cutter down now. I'm going to use my hand wheel over here to bring the carriage to where I want to cut. And I'll support this so that it captures the rollers around the pipe. And now I'll turn the machine on. 
quarter turn as, at a time as this goes around, every revolution. I'll spin that back for the next time I'm going to use it. Get this out of the way. I'll bring my reamer down. Ream the pipe out. Now I'm going to bring down the die head and I'm going to loosen the clamp screw since we're doing two inch and I'm going to slide the cam plate over to where we have our two inch mark. I'll tighten that up and once I start the machine what's going to happen is this is a self-opening die head so what's going to happen is as the pipe threads through the dies it's going to eventually push this lever out and that'll release the die head from the pipe itself. So I'll reset this just by simply pushing down on it. Okay. Now we're going to approach our pipe. And once you see that it's starting to thread onto the dies, you can go ahead and let the hand wheel go and it will thread itself on there. And once it pushes out that lever, it'll release itself as well. We'll reset that and throw it out of the way. Thanks for watching. What we're going to do here now is remove the dies from the 711 die head and install the beveling dies uh, so we can put a bevel on the end of a pipe. Um, one thing to remember here is that we offer two different styles or angles, I'm sorry, of bevel 37 and a half degree and 45 degree. You have one die that does the actual bevel itself, and then the other three, which are numbered as well, help center the pipe in between the die head so that the bevel die can come in and do its cut. Okay? So what we're going to do here is put on our safety glasses. And as I've showed you in the past, removing the dies here is as simple as I showed you previously. And you can check out those videos on Rigid Today on YouTube. So we'll pull these old dies out. And as I always try and tell you, make sure that you clean everything. There's not a lot of tolerance there, so even if they're new, there could be some grit on it from the manufacturing process. So make sure that you clean these before you put them in. So this one's going to go in pocket number one to the line, just as you've seen in the other videos. Number four. And number two, which is the beveling die. And you will close your die head. And sometimes one of these will be out of position. So you just move the dies until you get them centered correctly. Back off your clamp screw, slide the cam plate over so that it pushes the pin back into the slot. And then you snug that up and once you're on the machine then you can uh, go ahead and set it for size. We're going to show you how to bevel with the 711 die head. Um, I have my pipe cut already. What we're going to do is we're going to ream it. And you ream it just as you would if you were threading the pipe. Next I'll bring my die head down. And I have already installed the dies in there, so and depending on how much of a bevel you want, you can come back and check that after doing a little bit and make sure that it's the amount of bevel that you choose. And once again, there is a 37 and a half degree and 45 degree bevel. Thank you. In this portion of the video, I'm going to show you how to install the dies on the 714 die head. But before I do that, I want to explain to you a couple of things about this die head and, and how it works. This is called a receding die head. Uh, what happens is, by way of mechanical process on the die head and on the machine itself, 
um, what happens is the dies actually back themselves off of the pipe uh, to create the taper on the thread. Um, here you have a receding die, and here you have an older die that we used to have on a 415 die head. Uh, you could imagine the amount of force that needs to be created to do a thread with a full width die like that. So what they did was they made a receding die which reduces the amount of friction that's applied to the pipe. So your dies last a little longer, your machine works a lot less harder, and it's a lot simpler to use. Um, on the side here we have an insert to here line, okay, as opposed to the other ones that have it on the top. So as always we'll put our safety equipment on, our safety glasses, okay, and the first thing that you're going to do is loosen the locking nut and you have a washer here and the washer has a foot or a tab on it so you have to back this nut out enough to move that tab out of the way okay and usually I'll just hand tighten this just to make sure it doesn't move okay your die head is numbered so you have one through four there so you grab the corresponding die with your notch facing up that way it coincides with the cam plate and you will slide this in to the line and you'll do the same thing for all the other pockets and dies. Once you have all of your dies installed, you can back out the locking nut again and make sure that everything's in place if you haven't moved it. And check to make sure that everything is aligned and there you go it'll fall right in place okay now what you're going to do is once you have everything for example the the foot on the washers back in the slot um, you have a mark up here okay simply move your cam plate to the size that you're going to thread okay so in this case we're going to do four inch so we'll line that up with four inch and at this point tighten up your locking nut and now you're ready to thread in this portion of the video we're going to show you how to thread with the 1224 machine two and a half to four inch now the die head the 714 die head is a receding die head and we're going to cover all the steps of that in a separate video um, first thing we're going to do here is make sure that our, our machine is in the off position and we'll put our pipe into the machine make sure that you're Centering jaws and your chuck jaw are in the open most position. So we'll slide that back there out of the way for now. And now I'll grab the die head and slide this into the post hole. And we're going to lay that right on the carriage itself. Now we'll come back and address the pipe. And I'm going to slide that forward, giving me enough room to properly thread the pipe. And I'm going to close the front chuck. And then I will come in the back here and close the centering device in the back. And just take a quick look to make sure that all of the jaws on the centering uh, device are touching the pipe itself. And you can do the same thing for the front. Once you're confident of that, hammer it home, make sure it's secured. And now we can start the threading process. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring our reamer down put the machine in forward and keep in mind guys when we are cutting and reaming pipe you can do all range of size on the 1224 in high speed so from quarter to four inch you can cut and ream in high speed when it comes to threading you go from quarter to two inch on high speed and then two and a half to four inch you're gonna have to do that on 12 rpm which is low speed so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and ream this now And once again, I'm not applying a whole lot of force to this. I'm just letting the machine do the work. I'll shut the machine off to make sure that nothing's going to happen. And that seems to be fine. So I'll take the reamer out of the way. I'll bring the die head down. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and switch it to low RPM, which is 12 RPM. So I'll tap the foot switch, turn the machine on and bring it to low speed. As you can see there, it's turning a lot slower than it was before. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine on and with the hand wheel I'm going to go ahead and approach the pipe and as you can see there that's a little uncomfortable. You can pull out the hand wheel and index it and it'll click back in place and now it gives me the opportunity to apply some leverage to it so that I can force the dies onto the pipe. Now at receding dies what's going to happen is you don't have many teeth there so you have to hold pressure on it forcing it onto the pipe you don't have to use a whole lot of force but you got to make sure that you're cutting some material until you see the teeth starting to disappear you'll hear the tone of the motor slightly change as well once you're underway now the machine and die head is going to take over and what's happening right now to be real brief about it is the die head is working off of this sign bar that has a specific angle required for the taper on the pipe and once again we're going to cover that in a different video but what's happening at this point is it's working down the sign bar and slowly opening up the dies so that it can create the taper on the pipe. And once it's done, it will, you'll see that it will fall off of the sign bar and that's when the threading process is complete. We're just about there. You'll hear the tone of the motor change. And there you have it. It has fallen off of the sign bar. And there you have your thread. Now we'll swing the die head up and out of the way. And we'll bring our cutter down. And once again, moving your hand wheel, once you have your mark on the pipe where you want to cut, you'll bring your cutter to it and you'll support the cutter to make sure that the rollers are capturing the pipe and then you'll draw the cutter wheel to it and once again we'll tap this and put it into high speed there and at this point quarter turn at a time we'll start cutting the pipe do is I back this off so that it's ready for the next time you're going to cut and there you have it thank you in this portion of the video we're going to show you how to install the beveling dies in the 714 die head now you have three dies that don't have any numbers on it that one really doesn't matter those I'm sorry don't really matter where they go you can put them in one two or three they have no order number four is the one that's most important because it has to go into pocket number four so we'll go ahead and install these And you insert them to the line. Making sure everything's there. And once again, you have to clean your dies just as you would with any other set to make sure that they're free and clear of any grit or chips or anything like that. Install the last one there. Okay, loosen up your locking screw. Slide the cam plate over as you can see it grab the dies. And there you have it. In this portion of the video, I'm going to show you how to bevel the pipe using the 714 die head. Um, we have our pipe installed already, and what I'm going to do here is ream the pipe, and uh, then we'll bring our die head down so that we can bevel it. Okay, now that we have our pipe beveled, I'll bring my die head down. And keep in mind, guys, the reason that you're beveling the pipe is because you're going to weld the outside of it, for example. And there's two different dies that you can use. There's a 37 and a half degree and a 45 degree bevel. So be sure you choose the ones that you need correctly. Um, the die head has been set up as if it were to make a straight thread. So I have my uh, sign bar out of the way, my release foot and my lockout plate okay so at this point what we will do is we'll bring this forward we'll make sure everything's lined up correctly we'll open this up 
and at this point we'll start our bevel. I'm going to put this in low speed so it doesn't create too much smoke as well. You can do it in low or high speed. So as you see here, I've created a slight bevel on the outside edge of my pipe. Um, according to how you need it beveled, you can go a little deeper, a little shallower. It depends on what the uh, requirements are. There you have it. Thank you. In this portion of the video, we're going to show you how to use the 419 nipple chuck on the 1224 threading machine. Uh, the 419 nipple chuck is specific. In, in the sense that you have to order it per size. So there's a 419 nipple chuck for two and a half, three, and four inch. They all have their own catalog number. So be sure you understand that when you go to order one. Um, we already have a piece of pre-cut pipe here. And the way this works is it's hinged on the back. And you have these pins that go into a hole there that help actually center this. So you put that together. And there's three notches here for corresponding jaws on the chuck of the machine. So we'll slide that in place, chuck that up, and since we have a piece that's already been cut here, we're going to use this and thread that into the nipple chuck itself. Okay, now that that's done, we can ream and cut just as we would with an ordinary piece of pipe. The only difference here is that we're holding the pipe by way of the threads and that's what the nipple chuck actually does okay and the reason that you do that is because you don't want to ruin the threads by way of putting them on the jaws themselves so we'll turn my machine back on and we're going to go ahead and ream this now don't be afraid if you see the pipe stall it's just tightening itself onto the nipple chuck okay so now that we have our pipe reamed I'm going to switch this to 12 RPM and I'm going to bring the die head down, which is already set up for NPT. The threading process for this is the same as you would with any other piece of pipe uh, when you're using the 714 die head. So I'm just going to maintain pressure on there until I can see that the teeth are disappearing. Now I'm going to let it go and it will thread itself on there. You can make this pipe as long or as short as you want depending on the range and the ability of the machine. Uh, you can make close nipples with these as well. And there you have it. Thank you. In this portion of the video, I'm going to show you how to use the 725 cut groove die head. Um, as you can see here, we've already installed our pipe. We have it cut and reamed. Okay. And here you have the 725 cut groove die head. Um, we've already installed the dies on this. Uh, installing the dies on this is just like installing them on the 714 die head. So go back through the menu and look at the video for that, and you'll understand how to install the dies in this. Okay. Uh, we have our sign bar locked out of place because we're not actually doing a thread. We're cutting a groove into the pipe. Okay. So at this point, we have this tab here, this stop, and that's going to rest against the pipe. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply ever so slight pressure to make sure that that stays against the pipe. With my machine on, I'm going to turn on the machine here, and I'm slowly going to start actuating this feed screw and as you listen to the machine you'll be able to tell when it's actually hitting the pipe now what that's doing is it's just starting to take the surface off so don't be alarmed by the noise
Okay. So now you can hear, if you were up close to the machine, you could actually hear that the, the drag on it is consistent, which means it's cut through the coating and, you know, it's, uh, it's completely round now. So it's cut all the imperfections off of the surface of the pipe. And you, continuous, you continue, I'm sorry, to slowly turn this feed screw, okay? And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'll stop the machine and bring both my adjustment nut and my jam nut down. And the reason I'm going to do this is because uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit and say that we've, we feel we've cut enough out of it. So we'll lock this in place. And now I can back this out. And I'm going to back both out at the same time. And what this does is it opens the die head back up. I'll back this away, and right here is where you, you will use a pipe tape, as you see here, and what happens with the pipe tape is you'll wrap it around the pipe to measure for diameter. Uh, we'll cover that portion of it when we do the roll groovy. Uh, until then, this is how you do it. Thank you. In this portion of the video, we're going to show you how to use the 766 saran cutter. Um, you use this when you want to cut the pipe off square. In other words, you really don't need a burr inside or any slightest bit of an angle. You need it perfectly square so that then you can bevel the pipe and weld it together, just as an example. Um, you have a tool slide holder here, and this is your tool bit on the end of it. This is your feed screw, and then you have a jam nut and an adjustment nut here. And basically, once you bring this to the depth that you want, you would bring this down and tighten up the jam nut behind it. So. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to mount this onto the 1224 machine and use it. In this portion of the video, I'm going to show you how to install the 766 saran cutter in the 1224 machine. First thing we have to do is remove the cutter that's there now. This is a displacement cutter, so we're not going to use that. So right here we have a pin, and I'm going to drive it out from the back side. And sometimes it's not necessary to remove the pin completely. There you have it. So I'm going to put this on the bench. And now I'm going to grab my 766 cutter. And I'm going to slide it in place. Grab my hammer. there you have it. In this portion of the video, we're going to show you how to operate the 766 cutter. Uh, some of the things that are already installed on this machine is a bypass pin for the oil that goes up inside the carriage in this portion right here. So we'll show you some later pictures of that and how to install that. Um, some of the things that are left to do, we're going to shut off our machine to make sure that uh, I don't hit the foot switch or anything. We're going to install this oil line on the elbow that's already been installed on the bottom of the carriage. So these snap together, so you have to hold on to it and push it in place. And you have to have a die head in place as well, because if not, the oil will come out of the uh, post hole. So now we'll bring down our cutter. And naturally, at this point, you will have measured and marked where it is that you need to cut. And instead of tightening this up completely, what we're going to do is we're going to draw it up until it hits the pipe. And all we're trying to do with that is just hold it in place, okay? So now I'm going to take my oil line and aim it towards the cutter that's right in there and just let that drape over it so that it lubricates that cutter and you don't burn the cutter up over the pipe, okay? So at this point, we're going to turn our machine on. Make sure the oil comes out. And there you have that. I'm going to back out my adjustment nut and my jam nut, make sure it doesn't get in my way. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go ahead and cut this off. So once you listen to the machine, if you hear it, you can actually hear and see where it is that it's cutting. And again, you don't want to be very aggressive with this. All you really want to do is just let the cutter do the work. Okay? So I'm holding on to the hand wheel here to make sure that it doesn't move. And I'm just applying moderate pressure to the feed screw 
of the uh, cutter itself just to make sure that it continues to cut through the pipe. Now some people will back this off and then go at it again. It, you can do that if you want. It's really not necessary as long as you have adequate lubrication. And as long as that cutter is lubricated, you're not really going to burn it up at all. Now at this point, if at this point was where you needed to, I'm going to shut the machine off for a second. At this point, if this is as deep as you want to go with that cutter, what we would do at this point is we would bring down the adjustment nut until it stops up against there. We'll hold the feed screw and tighten that in place and then back the jam nut up to it. And what that allows you to do is if you have multiple pieces that you're working on and you need the same type of cutter groove in it, um, you could actually do that continuously with the same precision every time as long as they don't move the adjustment on it. But we're going to continue so we can cut this off. So I'm going to back this back out here and we'll continue to go from there. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.